Hello and welcome to the magic of fishing. Today you join me early on a Sunday morning in September and I'm back on the magnificent River Thames. In fact, some of you might recognize the backdrop and in particular the big weir just above me. It's even noisier than normal because finally, certainly in the southeast, we've had some rain, three days of rain and I was kept awake last night through a big thunderstorm, lots of flashes of lightning and massive claps of thunder right through the night. It's dried up a bit today, but we may get some more rain later. But this has really been the first big downpour that we've had in this part of the country all summer. And we are in that funny part of the year where we're sort of halfway between the end of summer and the start of autumn. There's still plenty of flowers in bloom, including the purple loosestrife just further down where I was fishing, well, I was fishing right next to it, my very first trip to the Thames. So I've come a bit closer up to the weir because we've had that extra water into the river and my good friend, Neil Waite, who really knows this river inside out, has urged me to get back to this spot. I've done a, a lot of exploring since I started this channel just over a year ago, particularly this year, 2024. I've been to all kinds of new places a lot of them with Farnham Angling Society and they run this stretch of River 2 between Old Windsor and Datchet. A, a beautiful spot, really is a lovely stretch of river and as before I'm the only person fishing it at the moment and uh, yeah I really wanted to get back somewhere that I tried before and see whether I could do even better than what I managed. There's some fantastic roach fishing here but You'll see I have got the big specimen rods with me and the conditions feel right for a barbel or chub. We've had that extra water. Neil's urged me to get back here and give it a go because that first proper downpour of late summer or early autumn should really freshen up the river and get those fish on the feed. And you can see there's one or two leaves just starting to turn, but still very mild and I'm hoping it might actually be a bit overcast today as well as some sunny spells and some nice blue sky just to help the fishing along that extra water will really be the main reason the conditions are right today but if we can get some cloud cover as well that might help but it's a beautiful morning it was quite muggy when I arrived and still overcast but the sun's just breaking through and glinting off the water it does seem to be up by a good foot or two from what i remember when i was here last in the middle of summer and not that i need it but if i do need another reason to be excited this morning it's got to be this chair you may remember i think it was my second trip to the river this season on the river way near home in woking and uh my very trusty, old faithful Coram Barrow chair had an unusual fall. I think it's because I've hammered it so much over the years, but Buster welding and uh, I was a bit devastated that day. I, uh, I put a phone call into the good people at Coram and I must say the response has been fantastic. They've had a bit of a, a stock issue over the summer, but Without any hesitation, they said they'd replace it. And not only that, but they've sent me a luxury version of the chair for free, for nothing. And okay, that might be because I have a YouTube channel, but I've got to say the customer service was absolutely fantastic. And I was so excited when I received this uh, Saturday morning, was it Friday or Saturday morning? I was like a little kid at Christmas. And yeah, managed to wheel all my gear from the car down to the river today no aggro and then I've got something really luxurious to sit back in while I wait for a bite how long we might be waiting for that bite remains to be seen it is definitely getting brighter and sunnier and that's not ideal but I'm still confident with the extra water we might just get ourselves a biggie and I know some of you watch this channel for the mixed pleasure style fishing that I generally do I'm happy catching small stuff, lots of different species and not knowing what's going to pull the float under or the tip round next. 
But I'm also always saying that variety is the spice of fishing, or it is for me. And you may have seen some of my exploits over the summer. Uh, I had a trip to the River Trent, Gunthorpe Lock, where I fished this kind of style. A couple of rods out, really waiting for a big one. Um, and I've had an evening opposite Hampton Court Palace on the Thames quite recently, where I had a sleeper rod out. No action that time, and the, the river really was low and clear up until recently. Um, so this is really only my third attempt at this big river, big fish style of angling. And it might not be the most prolific or exciting in terms of the number of bites or the number of fish. But for me, it is really exciting in that if one of these rods pulls round and that reel starts screaming, it could be anything on the other end. We could be talking a huge carp, barbel, a big chub, a bream. I'm really not fussy about the species of fish, but you know it's going to be a biggie. I'm fishing 20 mil boilies with paste wrapped around them, some really stinky paste that I made up yesterday in the garage. Uh, it's sauce ground bait mixed with uh, a bit of halibut pellet uh, ground up plenty of eggs, um, some fish oils and some sauce liquid. I also put plenty of hemp oil in there and I must say my hands are pretty smelly after uh, baiting up and casting out earlier. I've put a PVA bag of crushed pellets and boilies nicked on each hook. I'm using big leads, six ounce leads that are more like sea weights in my fishing experience, but that's the kind of lead you might need to hold the bottom when the river's a bit up like this and there's fresh water coming through it. So big, strong gear. And again, I know that's not everyone's cup of tea. Many of you watch this channel for the, for the fact that I don't mind what I catch, whether big or small, and I love getting a variety of species. I love not knowing what's gonna pull that float under or pull the tip round, as I say, but this to me is exciting too. It's a new kind of fishing. I'm keeping it fresh. And although Neil recently reminded me that you really do need to put the hours in in order to catch any number of specimen sized fish from a river like the Thames or indeed the Trent or many of uh, Britain's big waterways, even if you know the river well and you've got years of experience, it might take you a few days and nights to, to catch one fish. But there are a few ways you can tip the odds in your favour. One's getting advice from friendly anglers like Neil and Mucker, who I mentioned on my recent video, fishing on the Thames opposite Hampton Court Palace. There's lots of helpful people out there willing to give you advice. Second is a bit of luck, of course, always helps in fishing. And the third, but last but not least, is conditions and timing and you've probably heard me say that on some barbel videos on this channel in the past where I've managed to catch a fish in a short evening session or afternoon session on a smaller river like the River Way. It's, uh, it's a lot of it is about timing and this extra water we've had in the river will hopefully give us a chance today. For those of you who do like to see me catch a few fish while we're waiting for the big one I have brought along a trotting rod and uh, plenty of sweet corn and some home cooked hemp. And uh, if the sun gets up and it gets a bit brighter, we'll perhaps give the flow to go in between some good solid hours on these spessy rods. But if I catch one whopper today, it'll make, it'll make all this effort worthwhile. And uh, it's not a type of fishing I intend to do every time I come, but. It is exciting. If that rod goes over, I have no idea what it's going to be. And that's another reason you might need such heavy leads when there's a bit of flow on. Lots of weed churned up and lots of weed to get caught on the line. And there's almost a nostalgic element for me. Really have brought the big guns out. And these are my old carp rods. I first bought as a young man, probably in my mid-twenties, from Goldsworth Angling in Woking, which no longer exists, sadly. It's a great tackle shop. And uh, they weren't the most expensive or brilliant rods, but they served me well for a few years while I was into carping, before marriage and kids. 
And so if any of you have got some old carp rods that are not being used, this could be a new lease of life for them. Big river fishing. Two and a quarter pound test curve these rods, but they've softened with age. They're a good couple of decades or more old now, and uh, they're more like the modern barbel rods that you see for sale. Sometimes two pound plus test curves. But yeah, for lobbing out big six ounce leads and uh, paste wrap boilies, this is the kind of gear you need. The reels are spooled with 14 pounds. Very fine diameter actually. It's Fox soft steel line, but really robust line, which may seem heavy, but again, you imagine the snags out there in this big river below this weir. If I hook a monster, I want to get it out. Yeah, most of the purple loose strife where I was sat next to my very first trip here has gone over now. There's still one or two purple flowers. And if I do give the flow to go later, I'll actually be fishing a back eddy. This extra flow in, the water's coming back in on itself on this bank, down towards that tree. Unfortunately, as with the last session here, we are in the Heathrow takeoff flight path here, so some noisy planes from time to time. But to be honest, the noise from the weir pretty much cancels them out. Much more natural sound of running water. A few waves lapping on the shore. Oh, and the idea of one of these rods ripping off really will keep my interests for a good few hours. You can see the water's still quite clear despite two and a half, three days of rain, but there's definitely a tinge of colour in it compared to last time. And I don't have to wade much further out until it gets a bit murkier. And I've cast both rods fairly far over, just on the edge of the main current that's going along that far bank, rushing down from the weir. It's all kinds of eddies, backwater, slacks. It's hard to know where to fish, but with big leads, I know they're gonna hold in place. And I've put those PVA bags on of crush boilies and pellets and a few whole boilies coated in garlic oil as well as hemp oil stinky stinky stuff so hopefully the fish is going to find it out there in the boiling current and yes you folks at home know I'm not sponsored but big thanks to the folks at Core I'm really chuffed with that couldn't be more comfortable and I think Coram and Preston are now in the same company and takes Preston accessories as well as Coram. I've got a couple of butt rests there for the rods that clip in off the side of the legs. Everything's adjustable and extremely comfortable. It's nice to see the sun going behind the clouds again. I, I love summer, don't get me wrong. I'm sad to see it on the way out, but autumn is a fantastic time to fish, particularly rivers when they're getting that water. A few storms and a few heavy downpours into them. Freshen them up, get the fish in the mood again. It's amazing, you can see fish really switch on and go from a what's been a pretty quiet stretch or, or swim for a month or two to suddenly being really productive. And uh, that's why I decided to give this kind of fishing another go. When you see a change like that, as long as it's not a drop in temperature, when you see a change like that, that can often be a, a, a sign for the fish or a signal for the fish to switch on and start feeding. We've perhaps been laid low for a few days or weeks. So yeah, a nice bit of cloud cover as well at the moment and 
It'd be nice if it stays like that without chucking it down again. And in terms of feeding or casting, being a bit of a matchman and an all-rounder, you know I like to keep my feed going in, whether it's putting a feeder out there regularly or loose feeding by hand with the float and putting plenty of bait down every cast, get those fish in the mood and competing, that's when you can catch them. This is a different kind of fishing and does need some patience and some faith. Confidence is important, even if you've not caught anything big from a river like this. That's the case with me. I've got to keep reminding myself the conditions are good, the overcast skies are good, the bait's good, plenty of scent. And that's what you need to give yourself that confidence to, to cast out into the wild water and leave it there. Having said that, with the PVA bag approach, you can put a bit of pellet and boil it out where you're fishing and my accuracy is not going to be fantastic at this kind of range, but I will leave one rod, the upstream rod, most of the day, unless it's weeded up, uh, you know, a lot of weed in the line that's potentially dragging it out of place, or unless I see the tips moved in a way that's not a, a bite, I will leave that one out as long as I can. And then perhaps with the other rod, I'll have a cast about, try a few different spots, try a slack, Try right in the white water, try the middle of the river, and perhaps do that every hour. So that'll keep my, keep my uh, hand in and keep me interested. And uh, I'll keep trickling in a bit of hemp and sweet corn as well on this inside line. If there's no sign on the big rods by lunchtime, that's a good few hours away. And it's brighter then, I might just give the float a couple of hours for my entertainment and yours. See whether those nice roach are around. Had some absolute crackers last time I fished this spot. When of course I was a bit further down the river and the, the flow and the float was going downstream. It'd be strange to watch it going back up towards the weir, but roach can often be found in those back eddies. And yeah, I had plenty of fish up to half a pound. My first trip here it was brilliant fishing. And so yeah, I'd love to do a bit more of that in between long spells on the big rods. And this kind of fishing really does leave your hands free to tie some more PVA bags or film YouTube videos. I love the sound of the weir, it's really mesmerising and it is more powerful than I remember it last time, really piling through lots of oxygenated water. Yeah, still very mild so Perfect fishing conditions, really. Right, the rods have been out a good hour and a half now, and I'm going to move that this left hand or downstream rod. A bit of weed built up on it, but it feels like the rig's coming in nice and clean. Just quickly show you the rig before we do chuck back out. As I said, really hefty. 6 ounce gripper lead and uh, that's on a running bead, bead to bead down to a buffer with a quick change swivel inside and I'm using 15 pound camo braid so all speci style for me today that's down to a really sharp size 6 gardener I think it is barbel hook and a simple hair rig with that 20 mil boily hair rig on. And there may be a few of you saying, come on John, PVA bags, braid, size six hooks, we want you just to catch a few fish and have some fun. Well, 
this is fun definitely if you catch one and uh, yes you know I'm all for mixing modern tactics like PVA fast melt bags with uh, traditional fishing it doesn't have to be all old school it doesn't have to all be cutting edge again variety is the spice and as long as you enjoy it that's the main thing and then just the extra stink factor some of this homemade paste around the lead and this despite being made with eggs it will slowly leak off apologies for another plane coming over right overhead so we're ready to go and again fishing two rods like this just gives you that ability to try different spots not whack this one quite as far as last time that's right into a bit of a slack in the middle of the river we'll give that a go not using alarms just tightening up to the rig just to get that tip starting to pull over and then bait runner on try and get some of this garlic and garlic and hemp off my hands and we are fishing double bubble again Here comes that torrential rain again. Time for me to get the umbrella out. Oh, torrential. It really is. Pretty hardcore at the moment. Glad I brought my umbrella. Well, the rain has stopped. A bit of blue sky again. Still no action on the rods. But uh, it's been dramatic to sit under the brolly and watch it tip it down. If you want some evidence of the effect of water fresh water coming into the river it's now lapping on my bait tubs they were a good foot or two away from the edge of the water earlier so I'm gonna to have to move back a bit or at least move my stuff a bit back from the water it's come up a good foot I'd say now in the last hour yeah I certainly didn't need any reminders that it's raining absolutely tipped it down for the last hour or two but it really is a reminder of how rivers can react it's almost like fishing a tidal stretch when you suddenly look down and everything's floating in the water or being lapped by waves so a little bit of uh, rearranging required but we'll soon have everything comfy again and there we go back under the protection of the brolly feet still in the water and so is the chair and the rod pod it's incredible it's it's coming up all the time I'd say it's probably come up another half foot at least a few inches since I've uh, been moving my stuff so the water from last night's obviously getting in upstream coming in from all the tributaries the way and the lodden and uh, yeah there's even a bit of a tinge of colour in the in the water now that wasn't there before it could be the extra depth of course but this to me feels feels fishy whether we'll get one or not remains to be seen but I think I'll get this left hand rod out again once the rain eases off and uh, we'll, we'll certainly give it a bit longer before giving the float a go well would you believe it folks no sooner as I move up 
get everything resettled, I've had to move up again. The river's a good two or three foot up now. You can see my camera tripod there. It was that was out of the water not so long ago, and now it's over a foot underneath. We're moving everything right back up. But yeah, we've got a rising river. Wow, what a difference a day makes or half a day makes. I was sat somewhere down there underwater this morning. And after two moves back away from the rising water, I think I've hopefully got a spot where I can stay for a while, but I don't think I'll be doing a stick float down past that tree anymore. Might be a chance down where I fished last. Even that spot, the peg where I was sat, a little sandy bay is underwater. So hopefully I'll be able to get back okay. And it is a reminder when you're fishing big wild rivers, you do need to keep an eye on the levels, especially if it's tidal. But it seems to have stopped coming up for a bit now, but the whole river's changed pushing through all the way through now there's barely any slack areas or eddies really surging through well you know me folks I've just had a bit of lunch it's about one o'clock the Sun's come out again it's actually pretty hot all of a sudden and uh, although the conditions aren't ideal for trotting the water has come up by a good few feet it's got a bit murky I have to give it a go, don't I? There's always a chance that we don't get anything on the big rods today. It's you know it's it's a waiting game as much as getting the conditions right and whether luck will be with me and us remains to be seen. But I've got to have a quick hour or two on the float, try and catch a few small fish, get a few bites, and uh, see what's down there. I've left one of the big rods out, still fishing, and I've just come a few yards downstream close to where I was fishing last time actually and uh, we'll give it a go on the corn and hemp. So this feels quite familiar to me having fished this spot on the pin. Might have even been the same big Avon float. Oh that's potentially a quick bite there. And it's nice to be back here again, giving it another go. I would be surprised if the sport's as good as last time with the way the river's just come up, but you just never know. That's why I had to give it a go. Not going to bother with the keep net, my main aim today is big fish. It'll be nice if we can just put a little bend in the rod. And it might take a little while to work out the depth. I've plumbed up but there's a lot of weed down there because the river's come up so much. That's a bite and a fish. What's that, third trot down? Well, that's the first fish of the day. Very welcome. Would you believe that looks like a little skimmer, a little silver green. I've had one of them for a while on the corn. Very welcome. It's a roach. Lovely. Little bar of silver. Back he goes. Good old hemp, eh? 
can pull fish in all conditions. Nice just to see the float go under. This uh, corn is some I've had in the fridge for a while. It's perhaps starting to ferment, which I've sometimes found can actually appeal to the fish even more than normal corn. But I've added my usual squirt of molasses to darken it off a bit. I've actually been cooking up a load of hemp and tares recently but because I did well on the corn here last time and I didn't realise the river would be quite so high I thought why not do the same and then I'll get a good idea of whether the fish are around or not fishing pretty much as I was last time it's a nice long trot down again. Not quite four seasons in one day but I was talking about it being halfway between autumn and summer at the moment and really did feel like autumn this morning when I got here. Everything, everything was wet and soggy and it was dragging and uh, oh, the date's gone you never know. Yeah, but everything was very sort of autumnal and dank and damp. Now the sun's out, it's like summer all over again. Red hot. Butterflies and a few dragonflies flitting about. Just have to try and keep a bit more line off the water when it's turbulent like this. Otherwise the float gets dragged all over the show. I'll just have to work out if there are any more fish, what sort of line they're on. You can really see the oil coming off the hemp. home cooked in the last week. Always do a load before autumn. Same as I do at the start of a new season. And Rachel loves it. <laughs> There's so much water coming over the weir it's Hard to tell where the float's going to, which line it's going to take. Lots of swirls and eddies. There's another one. Not a biggie. Really close in the fish are perhaps hanging out the main flow. Another, another little roach. Happy with this start though. Again, just bring it back on this inside line. Absolute stunner. See that feed going in, but only a rod length out. It's one of the things I love about river fishing, you've got to work it out every single time. The great thing is if you've got the right conditions and the the bait, if you do find the fish and work out how they want it, what they want, when and where, you can have some fantastic fishing. 
just as good as commercials in terms of number of bites and fish. Perhaps not as big a fish or as powerful a fish in the case of carp, but there's plenty of fish down there. Just a case of me being a bit slow on the strike at the moment. Another lovely corn, corn caught roach. Back he goes. There's a few fish there though. Nice little break from my specimen hunting. I keep wanting to cast out further and reminding myself I need to draw it back in. Not so much flow down there, but that's where the fish are. Lost my bait that time. Using a size 12 hook, which is a bit bigger than I'd normally go for on the float, but I'm glad in these conditions I went for it. And uh, especially with using a bigger bait like corn. I think it's about right. It's another. Lovely fishing, a, a welcome break. Beautiful, just a job that one. Ease it back into that slower water. And of course there's nothing to say that I couldn't get a better fish out of this peg either. And on this bait, could be chub down there, better roach, but obviously not geared up for, for biggies. That's the best roach yet though. Really gave a good account of itself. Was going to show you, but he's an acrobat. Again, dropping it in where I thought I should be fishing in the flow and easing it back into that slack of water to work out what the fish want not what you want. Some of these jumbos really are noisy. But when you're catching fish you don't even notice most of the time. Oh, quick bites. Smaller fish this time, but they are all welcome on the magic of fishing, as you know. Could be the best one yet, oh. and he knows it. <laughs> and the top lip. Six ounce, good six ounce. Very acrobatic. Oh, another solid feeling one, very next run down. Awesome roach fishing. Beautiful fish. It's a solid feeling fish again down the bottom. Not a biggie, biggie, but 
really nice clunk feeling when you struck. I love that about trotting, that strike, and you think, is it the bottom now? Clunk. Oof, <laughs> almost instant, another odd tip. Sometimes happens that when you lose feed and the fish come right up underneath. It's obviously ideal if you can get the bites a bit further down the swim. I've been getting all over the place really, some early on in the trot, some right at the end and that's a sign of a boily river that's coming up. Lots of different flows and currents taking the bait, the feed and the fish with it to different places. So it's not classic trotting, it's not easy trotting, but very enjoyable for an hour or two. Staying deep. Hmm, starting to wonder if a pike's got it. <laughs> Much more solid feeling fish. Could be piked up. It's right under the rod tip, but staying deep. Oh, if it's not a pike, it's a good fish. Yes, it was a pike, unfortunately. Poor roach. He's uh, been grabbed and lost some scales there. Brilliant fishing. A very lively fish. Well, I've had a brilliant couple of hours catching roach like this. Hope you've enjoyed that little diversion too. Let's get this one back and have another go on the, on the big boy rods. Well, that's both the boily rods back out. New PVA bags, lots of pellets, boilies, crushed boilies. And I'd say the flow's just calmed down a little bit. It's still up, but uh, it's not piling through like it was a bit earlier this afternoon. It's actually turned into a beautiful afternoon. Really quite hot. And uh, it's not a bad place to sit waiting for a big one. Well, hello again. This feels a little bit reminiscent of the Gunthorpe lock video where I really did try all day and all night to, to catch a big and it didn't happen. Still got plenty of confidence in my approach, my baits, and uh, the conditions are right, but nothing as yet. So I'm glad I did have that little go on the float earlier just to uh, break things up for you and for me. But it's a lovely evening. I'm still in my t-shirt. It's about half six, quarter to seven, and you have to be off this water by about nine o'clock latest, I think, actually out of the car park by nine. So probably got another couple of hours, tops, hour and a half, and every chance as the light fails. But it is a reminder today that it's not easy catching really big fish. and. Even when the conditions are right and the, the swim feels right and your approach feels right, it doesn't mean you're gonna catch every time. But as I watch a heron wing its way across the water, I've got no regrets. You know I love my fishing whether I'm catching or not and I hope you still find my videos entertaining whether I'm catching or not. I know you prefer it when I do back up. Everyone does, we're, we're fishermen or anglers. Sorry for you ladies watching as well. And 
yeah, we we're always happier when we're, we're catching, but it's still been a really pleasurable session by a special piece of river. And I've seen a kingfisher hunting really close by, just on the tree up to my right, and uh, yeah, heron just now. And it's been beautiful, apart from the noise from the plains, the weir drowns that out most of the time, as I said this morning. And it's just a lovely way to spend a Sunday. So no regrets, even if I don't end up catching anything. And as always, it's been an absolute pleasure having you with me. So don't forget to leave me a comment, whatever happens. And I look forward to reading them as always. It's incredible, but you can see how much the river's fallen back now. All that stump there was easily covered a few hours ago. I wish I could see the sun going down almost round the corner past those trees. actually just come up the bank, taking the rods out, giving them a brief rest before rebaiting, recasting and uh, come up the bank and had a quick walk up to the weir. It's absolutely thundering through as usual and really impressive sight. Did make me think, oh, should I have been up right in that white water? But it's always hard to tell and with that extra rain coming in, I thought, there will be plenty of oxygenated water right through the stretch and probably didn't need to be right up there but who knows that's that's part of fishing when you do catch you feel like you made all the right decisions and when you're not catching so much it's like ah, should I have been there should I have cast there should I have tried over there but again no regrets and you can just about see the sunset behind me so let's get myself back down to the river and fish my socks off for the final hour or so. Fresh baits, fresh bags and they're both back out fishing. Just keep everything crossed for the final hour or so. Well, I've got my head torch on and it's not going to be too long until I'm ending yet another session in the dark. I've really felt lucky to have done so much fishing this summer and into the early autumn. And to finish so many of those sessions in the dark, you always give yourself that extra chance when you fish through dusk and into that first period of darkness. And it does get a lot easier to do that. Now the days are getting shorter. Not so many late nights required. So still a chance, the rods are out and you'll sure know about it if I do get lucky. But it does feel like it might have happened already if it was to happen today. I've been on the bank since eight, doing everything I can and really enjoy catching those roach. But it's another session where a biggie's not to be. And to be honest, it just increases my admiration even more for those anglers that do manage to catch big fish on a regular basis. From big rivers particularly and uh, it's been another reminder to me that it's not easy you put the hours in you get your prep as good as you can and you were uh, you try and time your arrival on the river right and i think i got all of that right but still looks like it's not going to be but as i've said already no regrets you learn something every time you come on the bank i've been surrounded by stunning scenery and I'll be back, you know. I, I will be giving this another go. I can't promise that it'll be the next video. It might take a bit more variety and a bit of difference for me to uh, get my mojo going again. But I do still want to get a big fish from a big river and I'm sure with help from my 
fishing mates and a bit more determination it will happen and it's just going to be all the sweeter when it does happen that's why it's called fishing and not catching so i hope you've enjoyed it despite the lack of big fish and if you're one of the viewers who's enjoyed this but you're not yet subscribed to the magic of fishing come on hit that button please it really would make a difference to all you faithful followers much love as always i really do appreciate your ongoing support for the channel and your comments mean the world they keep me going so do drop me a line otherwise look after yourselves and i'll see you again soon on the bank